yelling out something stupid. Uh, just know that you are an incredible douche, and I hope you die. All right, here we go. It got a little intense at the end, but just so you know, if you're a person that yells stuff at performers who are some of the most worthless piles of garbage alive, you are the equivalent of a human tiger fire, and I will have a smile on my face as we kick you out. All right! Well, jeepers, I'm ready to start the show. If you're ready to start the show, give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, everybody clap your hands for your house. on earth. It's easily one of the best comedy clubs in America. I think it's because they have something for everyone. Millennials, we have social media. We're on it. Gen Xers, you invented websites. We still have a website. Baby boomers, we kept our uh, telephone just for you. If you have any grandparents that like comedy, every Friday morning, the headlining comics are on something called a radio show. Maybe you know what that means. The only thing better than coming to a comedy show is coming to a comedy show for free, right? Yes. There are comment cards on your table. Fill them out, turn them in. You might get to come back for free. Yeah. Should have been a little faster on that one. That's okay. I'll cut you some slack. Man, favorite place on earth. Uh, there are a few different places I could be at my favorite place on earth. Uh, bar. I'd have to talk to people. Uh, and I'd have to maybe listen. That's terrible. Audience, same thing. I don't like it. Listening, not one of my strong suits. Conversations, I just forget. Another thing I forget is asking questions. Not a big fan of questions. To me, questions are a lot of pleasantries. Nobody means them. But every now and then you'll get one. You'll get someone asks you a question you aren't expecting. You learn a lot about yourself. Catches you off guard. I remember in uh, grade school, at recess, standing outside in a circle of friends, all boys, which is out there hanging out. Uh, this <laughs> classmate of mine asks the group a question, just blows our mind, just changes everything for forever. We're standing there, uh, there's a low in conversation, and he asks us, tits or ass? <laughs> <laughs> Done. A whole new life. Day zero. <laughs> now, looking back, nostalgically speaking, that's hilarious. It's downright cute. At the time, it was the most important question anybody had ever asked me. <laughs> and I had been asked if I believed in God. <laughs> and had this. This was the question. So we're going around the circle, uh, picking sides, as it were. And uh, it comes to me, and I... Uh, bewilder them, I befuddle them, because I say neither. I said vagina. <laughs> like, vagi a nine-year-old vagina man. <laughs> now, of course I'm chalking that up to curiosity. Also ambition, though. Because <laughs> early 90s we had bikinis. Butts weren't behind lock and key. Kind of everywhere. Seeing a topless woman, that's just the right place at the right time. <laughs> it wasn't that difficult. But seeing a woman's crotch naked, that was concentrated effort. <laughs> Certainly. That was next level. That was no accident. Well, after that recess, I had a bit of a reputation in <laughs> school. A little later, uh, uh, a couple weeks later, this kid, a grade above me, comes at me before school. He says, I heard about you. I know you. You think, you think you're so cool. You think you're such a hot shot. Bet you didn't know this. And he proceeds to tell me that some vaginas have teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, was older than me, so I tried to play it cool. But this was definitely something I wanted to fact check. <laughs> the best I could. I went home, I asked my dad about it. He said, Dan, there are some things a man needs to find out for himself. <laughs> you will 
not be surprised to learn that I graduated high school with my virginity intact. <laughs> At one point, I even went to my mom. I went to my mom, I told her I was gonna save myself from marriage. She stopped what she was doing and looked me in the eye, which in our house meant it was gonna be an important conversation. It didn't always happen. And she said, but damn, when you're shopping for shoes, don't you try them on before you take them home? <laughs> that was not the validation of my voluntary celibacy that I had expected. I was flabbergasted. I was befuddled. I was speechless. What I should have said is, Mom, I don't shop for shoes. You just buy them for me. <laughs> You know what size I am. <laughs> but I couldn't say anything, so I just started to leave. She took this opportunity uh, to really flesh out her women as shoes metaphor. And as I was leaving, she reminded me to always wear my socks. <laughs> my mom is both I, uh, in real life presence and an online presence. I think having a parent who is active online is a lot like having like a parent who has a child who is active sexually. Because both parties know the other party is out there just making mistakes. <laughs> Not only is it necessarily a mistake, but my mom is active social media friends with all of my exes. <laughs> To the extent that if my ex has had a Facebook group, she would by default be the moderator. <laughs> I'm surprised my exes don't have a Facebook group because they do have a lot in common. Questionable taste in men. <laughs> Similar perspectives, they have all referred to me as a learning experience. <laughs> I'm not upset about it. I have referred to more than one of them as a place to stay. <laughs> So all's fair. Uh, but that's not how it's played out. That's not the reality of the situation. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the reality of the situation. Recently, one of my exes got engaged and posted a picture of the ring on Facebook. Not only did my mom like it, she commented. Not only did she comment, she was the first one to comment. <laughs> is what she said. She said, congratulations, Jess, you picked a winner. <laughs> that is painfully true. I wasn't the only one upset by it. The other person upset by it was my wife. Because it insinuated things about me, but it insinuated that she was the kind of person who would marry someone who wasn't even by their own mom's definition a winner. Uh, my wife is great. She is easily the funniest person in our house. Uh, a lot of a lot of comics they'll come out. They'll uh, they'll practice at home so that they're good in public. I come out in public so that when I'm with my wife, I can just hold my own. <laughs> That's what I do. Thanks for clapping. Thanks for laughing. I'm Dan Bacula. Thanks for being here. Uh, it, it is, you don't even know how good it's gonna get. Uh, your next comedian, you might be familiar with him, you might have seen him. Uh, he's, a, he's a huge presence on uh, Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Earl Elliott. Come on up.